Every year, too many families lose their dads, their brothers, and their sons to suicide. Across the globe, we lose a man to suicide every minute of every day. And in Australia, one out of six men suffer depression at any given time. It is a known fact that very few Aussie men with anxiety and depression will seek treatment. So why is this? Is it a stigma? Or do they see it as a sign of weakness? Or is it just that the men feel that they need to man up, keep the boy code and deal with it? Well, whatever it is, it's wrong. Today, we've put together a group of people that want to share their knowledge, experience, when it comes to the topic of mental health. If we all just get off our high horse for a moment and go, you know what, it's absolutely okay not to be okay. After losing one of his closest mates to suicide, radio host Gus Warland founded the Gotcha for Life Foundation, raising money and awareness to help men and boys mental health. Why did we not see it? I mean, we did see it, but we didn't know what to do with it. Lizzie White began her counselling career after losing her brother to suicide. There's four blokes to every woman in yeah. Australia who commit suicide, so it's definitely a much uh, male-dominated thing. Dr Olaf Nielsen is a professor of psychiatry with decades of experience in suicide prevention. I get around, nobody knows unless they know me. And Brad Spillane has his own journey with mental health and is a survivor of a suicide attempt. Dr Nielsen, do you want to give us a snapshot of what is mental health? I guess it's, uh, it can be understood in terms of freedom from, from the, uh, the manifestations of, of particular mental illnesses, you know, anxiety, depression, psychosis and so forth. The anxiety and depression in particular uh, affect about 5 or 6% of the community at any given time. Why is it you think that men actually don't put their hand up and say, hey, I need some help? Yeah, boys don't cry, you know, yeah. men don't cry. Our masculinity and what it takes to be a man is actually killing us. So we have to do something differently to what we're doing at the moment. Six a day we lose, two women a day, but more women attempt it than men. So more women attempt, but more men complete. So, so that, that shows the problem we have, so the problem we have in this country. If, the, if those numbers were actually road toll, you would ban cars. The hard numbers Gus is talking about make hard reading. And in 2016, of the 2,866 deaths by suicide, 75% of them were male. That's just over 74,000 potential happy years of human life lost in 12 short months. And no one at this table knows the menace behind these numbers more intimately than Brad. Brad, I mean, your story when I read it, it you know, it, it, it broke my heart, to be really honest. Can you tell me a little bit about it, what happened to you? I felt like I was basically always trying to get out of, like, this clay pit, you know. Every time I tried to climb, I was falling back down and, and the pit was getting deeper and deeper. Everything at that point of my life, there was nowhere for me to go. That was the, that was the only... Option. Option that I had. But that's how you felt. That's how that's, I felt. That, that actually wasn't the truth, though. Yeah. Like, it was your truth in your moment. At that time. You... At that time, did you have anyone to talk to? No. For every death by suicide in Australia, it is estimated that as many as 30 people attempt to end their lives. But talking to someone is proven to save lives. Australia's first telephone support service, Lifeline, was launched in 1963. Today, its phone lines and websites receive 400,000 calls from men who need help every year. But the truth is, men are more likely to open up to male counsellors. So that's where Gotcha for Life has stepped up to help. Some of the Gotcha for Life has done, we've put a scholarship together now, so if you want to be trained up as a lifeline counsellor, we'll pay for it. So that takes away that little hurdle that might be stopping some blokes. If we get more blokes answering the phones, then more likely perhaps for them to have the convo. If that conversation happens, it might save their life. While all the evidence around suicide prevention points to open dialogue saving lives, 20% of Australians still believe talking about suicide actually increases the risk of people dying. So it's clear that attitudes need to change. Because talking honestly, openly, with family and friends isn't about solving someone's problem, but helping that person feel connected and supported. You know, you're in a crisis and you talk about how you deal with crisis. I think we're scared of that. We're afraid. We want to fix you. If you're not OK, we want you to be OK. But what we need to do is go, it's OK not to be OK. Exactly. And there's treatment there. You know, there's, uh, it's probably not known, well known that Australia's the leading, got the leading online mental health service for anxiety wow. and depression. You know, we run out of Macquarie Uni called Mindspot. You just get onto mindspot.org.au and you can do it in privacy, in an anonymity. You know, it's uh, perfect for guys. I wish more 
guys would do it? The, it's the problem with us blokes. We will talk to the cows come home. We'll talk about footy. We'll talk about the weather, work, but we won't talk about things that are important. We won't have that connection where we look at each other in the eye, and they're the conversations I would love Aussie blokes to have. Because if we're having that, then we've got that gotcha for life, mate. We're more likely to be able to cope with the shit that gets thrown at us, and we'll be able to throw out all this armour that, that for years we've been told that we have to wear because that's the man's role, that's the man's job. And I truly believe that our mental health issues would deteriorate to a really lower number, and a number that we should have for a country like Australia.